Actually, if anybody knows the answer to this, I will give you a uh, review copy of one of my poetry books. So kibble, right? Kibble's like that little stuff, cat food, right? Does anybody else, uh, does anybody know what else kibble is? It's, it's a noun, and it's something very, very specific. Does anybody have any idea? That's the little pail that sits above the well. Every time you see like a picture of a well with a pail, that's, that's uh, called kibble. It's important. Okay. Now, does anybody know anything about, um, let's see, mythology, Psyche? You remember Psyche? All right, great. Who is Psyche's like lover? Cupid. Because what happened is Psyche was really like hot and um, <laughs> Venus was really jealous because um, you know, Psyche was so hot and she got a lot of attention. And so she told Cupid, listen, I want you to go and take one of those golden arrows, right? Not the lead arrow, because if you shoot the lead arrow, what does that do if you get shot with uh, Cupid's lead arrow? It makes hatred, all right? But if you do the golden, the golden arrow creates love, right? So, so Cupid was going to go and Cupid was going to get Psyche, but accidentally Cupid uh, scratched himself with his own golden arrow and fell in love with Psyche. Okay, why am I telling you all that? Uh, so I was possessed. Now it's important to look at this card, by the way, because I was fucking like incredibly meticulous in looking at this damn card. And as I was looking at it, I was sort of possessed by this, this cat. And um, you know, this cat was like, so I, I guess I didn't really write this. It was written by that, that cat under the piano. And it was saying all kinds of really inappropriate things, you know, and be like, blah, 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 and it'd be like cock ring. And I'm like, really? You want me to write about that? So, yeah. <laughs> so, all right. So, sort of inspired too by, um, I had read a story recently about a cat that got shot with uh, an arrow, and it was able to live like seven days, and it never really died. It just kind of found its way back home. And so, that's what kind of, that's what you see there. That cat, you can't see the arrow because of the way that it's laying, but it has found its way back to this space. And oh my God, here we go. So this is called Shot Through the Heart and You're to Blame. Egret Monday, that's one of the characters. Egret Monday, you gave kitties a bad name. Yeah, meow. It's always so awkward for the humankind to determine when the sexual swinging commences. Are you looking at your card? Okay. Tonight on the threshold of debauchery with this crowd, completely ignorant to the fact that I have assembled them by my own design, I am the elegant pussy under the piano. I mean, it sounds like some wonderful euphemism. She really had her pussy under the piano when we walked into the room with a bouquet of thorn blossoms, or when Eli told her the news of the infamous swing party feline massacre, she clammed up and her pussy was under the piano. <laughs> what if instead I was a cock under the piano with my feathers in a tizzy? I mean, would I be more heroic? Then perhaps the whole point of view of my mysterious tale would change. Would you take me more seriously? Oh, you will. Meow. Meow. The M on my forehead is not for mystery or mischievous. It is an upside down W, two fangs, not a murmur, more emblematic memory now maimed. I am tabby, striped, silk, and regal. And in my strut was the lineage of African wild cats. And now it is crippled with an internal splint of arrow shot from the bow of Egret Monday. Egret Monday, front stage left. I have called myself into being for this snapshot just for you and you. I mean, you see me content as if curled into a human lap. But to these pitiful pseudo pornographers, especially Egret Monday with his sweaty brow and kibble spectacles with diseased well water lenses, I am long gone and winded, pierced with arrow. Our kitten grammar is a gust of salacious licks of wind and indolent vibrations until we forget our place. Until this nudity begins and the piano man strikes his jig all over the black and whites of the piano keys and everything is gray like days before when Egret Monday with an arrow
pierce the peace that resides in the brash cuteness of a kitten heart. If only his dick were bigger, he wouldn't have such hate. <laughs> Why did he shoot that arrow? Did he, fashion, did he fashion himself a Cupid archer for Lola? Rear stage left. Was he frustrated because she had a penis or that She'd rather pick her ass and nose than go down on him, her biceps, Egret imagined, flexing wildly as Lola bends and turns animal on all fours, feeding on Egret's brilliant white flesh. Oh, Egret, if only you were so lucky, I might not be the pussy under the piano. I might not have commissioned this piano player to summon the fall of the entire room. Or did he draw back the bow because Lola preferred Butler brand blow-up dolls, complete with cigar vibrator and six-inch deep eye sockets? <laughs> when the arrow came, I was chasing scents and shadows in a meadow. I mean, it was evening, and the sky was a muted color of hamster entrails. There is no other way to describe it. In me still resides the hunt, so I understand why Egret might draw back a lead-headed arrow. I mean, he's playing anti-Cupid again, and I'm his target. Oh, son of night and hell, mated with chaos, why not use a golden-headed arrow? At least then I might transform into pure love. I mean, that's what you want, isn't it? Someone to love you? Isn't that what they all want here, now? I mean, us? Oh, beautiful psyche, we must scratch ourselves with our golden arrows before it is too late. So Egret shot. And the arrow, it just pierced my chest. I mean, it skimmed my heart, and it stented my strut by attempting an exit at my elbow, a searing ecstasy of entry in my hair, all needled, injecting the sunset with muse and deep, writhing moans of contempt. And then the purr came, that analgesic purr that kept me sedated enough to make my way in the darkness and find my way back to this existence a pussy under the table on the threshold of pit pitiful sex. Look at Egret now. I mean, there he is. He's sucking on an anal plug, and Lola behind him lubing her ass with mucus. And seeing a song of stage right, Madeline clinches the stem of her Merlot like it's a throbbing vessel of false pride. And Gary in his seersucker suit offering up a cock ring. Miss Machko Gladelow is rear right with her vamped up heels, silk slip, black cock feather cap. She eyes Dung Hewsome, the dwarf who, ironically, is the only party member, well, with a substantial member. I mean, he looks as if he needs a litter box. And Miss Machka too, for soon she will be happy to piss all over him. You will need more, you will need more than an arrow and distance. I mean, you will need more than a posh swinger party feigning desire because you can't find love and wonder in the natural world. Meow, meow, meow. If there's anything at all I want to do in this room, it's to unravel the light from the yarn ball moon stage center out of the window curtains and crawl right out of this atmosphere and become the cat in the moon and purr all over this miserable sadness. Oh, Cupid, shoot them all with multiple arrows and let chaos reign. I mean, let the whole scene be framed in absence and stuck to the wall as a reminder to never fuck with the latent wildness of a tabby cat. Never forgive Egret. Never forgive them, for they know exactly what they do and they stink of it. Meow, meow, meow. Top hat shadow man, Play for me, hurl that fur ball from the throat of your piano and steal the breath from all these heathens before they strip down and become primal again and spear another with swords and adolescent regret, insecurities about sizes. Oh, let them swing, let them swing. I, laying here with my tabby smile, will let them swing, but be it from ropes, hiss, hiss, hiss. <laughs>